Trinity, verse 166, I'll conclude this verse today. Alinde kalindi tatanava lata madira gate, hartam or bhuta shramajala bara porna vapusha, sukha sparshena amilita nayano shitalamatulam, kada kuryam savijanam ahaha radha morabido. Translation. <clears throat> of course, most of all the verses of Radha Sudhaniti, there's two, there's two things going on. One is the experience, the direct experience of Radha and Krishna's Leela, and entering there and rendering various sevas. And his Siddhasrupa is a mandri, or his at least identifying with that position of a mandri, Saraswati Pad. But after having that experience, like all of us, we may have an experience, and then afterwards we may record it or write it in a diary. Uh, it is something marvelous or majestic or divine or amazing. Like I have one diary I've been keeping for some time. It's called Sadhu Diary. <laughs> Whenever some interesting person appears here out of nowhere, or anywhere where I may be, and gives me some instruction or some help, then I take note of that. It often happens when you live in Holy Dham, people will come to visit you and, and you'll meet them and out of nowhere. And it almost seems like it must be Krishna or Guru coming in this form to uplift you and promote you on the path of pure bhakti. Very amazing place, Vrindavan. So here, in the la we're discussing the la basically the verses he's entered into his Siddha identity, Siddha Avesh, and he's entered the Leela of Radha and Krishna, this is repeating, and he's fanning them. Radha and Krishna have concluded their intimate amorous affairs, and they're, they want some fresh air. So they come out to the terrace of their, uh, what is called, Navalata Mandir, very, very beautiful Mandir, not like the Mandirs we go to, but made of latas and creepers and marvi latas, very fragrant, very gentle, very attractive, colorful, natural. Forest life, Ban Bihari. Krishna is known as Ban Bihari. He plays, he enjoys in the van, the forest, and who, who wouldn't? Every sattvic man or lady very much enjoys forest and nature. It goes hand in hand. <clears throat> with a sobhavic interest in sattva -gund. So they, they're they out on the veranda, what is called Alinde Kalindi, because this is Sanskrit, he makes it very nice. Alinde Kalindi, Alindi Kalindi Tata, Tata, everyone knows, on the banks of the Kalindi, on the terrace of what? We say veranda, or this is a veranda, it's not exactly a lata, mandir, navalata mandir. But they're on the terrace and they're been perspiring and they're quite, they want refresh, to be refreshed. And the mandri is right there at the right moment, at the right time, rendering exactly the right service in just the right way. So there's a lot of right right things here. Time, place, seva. Because seva, one thing that seva she's rendering is, as we hear here, is samvid, samvijanam. Kara kuryam samvijanam ahaha rara muravido. He's saying that I, I have seen this in my sporty, in my deep inner vision as a byproduct of my accomplishment on the Bhakti Marg. I've attained the platform of Bhav and Prem. And therefore, Yoga Maya and Purnamasi and Gurudev and Guru Sakhi and Radha, they've allowed me to enter the Leela. It's technically called Leela Pravesh, enter Pravesh, the Leela, and do my seva. Either your nitya seva given by guru or various agya, various orders and instructions given by other well wishers in your sakhi gan, or the uh, leader and chief of all the mandri, Sri Rupa Mandri, or Lita Sakhi, regardless of your own yateshri. So now he's saying, Kada Kuryam, when, Kuryam, when will I do that? Kada Kuryam, when will I do that? What this seva, and uh, this particular seva of fanning? And where will I do it? And when will I do it? Well, I'll do it here on the banks of the Yamuna at this Navalata, Navalata 
Kunja, this very fragrant and freshly blooming place, and it's a very needful and necessary seva when someone is fatigued and, they, and perspiring and they want fresh air and nice breeze. So then, of course, there's so many other implications in rendering any particular service. It's not only the seva that you're rendering and the expertise which you're doing it, which comes with practice and with mercy. Like everybody fans the deities, or everyone fans, but some people do it very artistically. If you ever watched Pujaris around the world, some are very mechanical and robotic, like this, like do 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 do, like a machine, and some are very stylish. And I remember one Pujari in Krishna Balaram in 1981 or so, some kind of French devotee. He would, when he would fan, he would have his left foot would be on the mat, and then his right foot would be back a little bit on a angle almost like Trivanga, and whenever he would fan, he would, his, he would rise up on his right foot. <laughs> Somehow, he, his whole body was in a style. <laughs> he would rise up and his, right, his left foot would stay flat and his right foot was, was like this position. Then this would go up. <laughs> then he was so like, it's, it's all in the wrist, like tennis. It's all in tennis, it's all in the wrist or whatever, forearm. Uh, very attractive. I, I remember going, usually when you go to Mangalarti, you want to see Takraji in Radha Shamsundar. How beautiful, how attractive, sweet, merciful. But he was a, he was a de fifth, you know, third deity on the altar. <laughs> there was Radha Sham, because there, I mean, at least to me, I'm not very, uh, I'm kind of dull. I, didn't, I don't see Radha Sham moving and dancing and singing and speaking when I see them. I just see them standing there so beautifully. He was three-dimensional and moving, and uh, <laughs> quite attractive, beautiful dhoti, and folded in such a way, and you know, very, very French, <laughs> and very stylish, and very attractive. So it's like one eyes on him, and then that. Because I also do pujari work, and I thought, it's, it, I just will never make it. <laughs> this is lifetimes of practice. So it's the way you do it. How do you render your service? physical expertise. That's why there's terms used in Radha Sudaniti by Saraswati Pad uses uh, Suparicharini. Paricharini means Dasi, Kinkari, Manjri, maidservant of Radharani. Suparicharini means good. In other places he says Chatur, Chatur Anucharani or Chatur Kinkari means very expert, very clever. She very cleverly serves. So these adjectives are there to uh, preface the action of seva. It's done expertly. And then sometimes he says, um, rasa, um, he says, rasa kinkri, I'll serve you, seva rasa kinkri. He said, I will, I will be your manjri, your maidservant, and I'll serve you with lots of ras, lots of feeling, and, and genuine feeling and devotion and of course, what ras, ultimately it's the ras of her stahirati, which is uh, reflected of, from Radha as madhur rati. <clears throat> and it's, fe it's feeding and offering madhur to madhur. Radha and Krishna coming together, they generate the greatest sweetness, relished by each other, but then the mandris throw their madhur rice, ras into the picture and then churn it all up together and make it even sweeter. So that's called rasa. Rase, Rase Paricharani, at the Manjri Sevai, she serves in such a sweet, loving, uh, madur way with her own uh, in, independent individual feelings of madur ras or conjugal love for Krishna, which every Manjri has. But of course, her additional affections for Radharani. But then she's drawing from the unlimited reservoir of Radharani's rasa filled heart, the Mahabhav Sindhu of Radharani. Is also splashing in the hearts of her manjaris, because the manjaris are bhav taratmi, bhav taratmika with Radha. My bhav is, my bhav is your bhav. So this is, uh, it's not only I'm one in mind with you, and one in body with you, and one in place with you, and one in time with you. I'm in time. I'm right in time with you, like syncopated dancing. Uh, Indian lady dancers are famous around the world. 
as being the fa most expert in syncopated dancing. Um, probably because they were all Gandharvas in last life or something. But when they have eight or ten ladies, there's one song being played. It could be anything, whatever, music score or, or Bharat Natyam or whatever. If eight or ten are dancing, it almost looks like a yogi expanding himself into eight forms. Everyone is, everyone's hand movements are exactly in the place, all eight in a line. And everywhere around the world there's famous dancers and but this particular type is called syncopated dancing, group group dancing. They're extremely coordinated. So the what the, what I'm using that analogy is to show that the mandri she's moving exactly with the movements of Radharani, not not an inch ahead or an inch behind, right on right on time, like a reflection. So that's the the total submersion, the total submersion of. The mandri's entire being in Radharani, and that's what it takes. And the closest example of absorbing oneself in another's heart and life and feelings and need is the example of a mother, a mother with her child, with her newborn child. She's totally the real, the genuine mother with Vatsalya, which is most, mostly like that. She's submerged into the baby, his feelings, his thinking, and he's speaking unintelligible words that no any any outsider can understand what it means. And gagu guga, this that, you know, God knows. And the mother knows exactly. Well, this means that, and this means. I say, and I say, what are they saying? What is this language? So, what is the language? It's the language of the heart, because the mother's heart is fully identifying with her byproduct, <laughs> known as her child. And she can feel his. She can feel what he feels, and know what he knows, or, or know what he, know what he knows, know what he needs, and uh, be right there. So this is something of a distant reflection of the type of absorption that a mother has in her child, that a mandri has in Radharani, and she only has a respite from her seva, her daily seva. The mandri's respite is two hours two and a half hours, you read about the life, the charitra of our Das Goswami Pad, and he's, uh, he's telling there, or I mean rather they're writing about his glories, his mahima, his life and teachings, that he only slept 90 minutes a day. So why is that? Because he's absorbed in his manjri sroop, his tulsi manjri, and after the rasa dance, and after all, so many wonderful experiences and save us. Then Radharani and Shamsundar, they drift off into happy repose, as they say. Peaceful slumber, blissful, blissful slumber of, and wrapped in each other's loving embrace, lying in a fragrant and soft and tender, nourishing flower bed on the banks of the Yamuna with a gentle breeze wafting in from the gentle waves of the Yamuna with blossoming lily flowers filling the entire kunj with the most romantic and restful and peaceful aroma you could imagine in the three worlds. And now they're resting and the manjri comes out to the veranda and she said, she looks and I think they're really sleeping, you know. Radharani's lying on top of Krishna's chest, being the, of course, the victor, and Viparita Leela, and Viparita Ratikeli, Radharani, that's why we say Jai Shri, Jai Shri. For the Raghunuga Bhakti, the term Jaya Shri has nothing to do with Lakshmi. Although the uh, Vishnu Bhaktas and Vaidhi Bhaktas, Jaya Shri generally implies Lakshmi Devi, Sri Lakshmi Devi. But for the Raghunuga Bhakti, a practicing Manjri Bhava Pasana, then when he says Jaya Shri, then many, many events and meant just that name. Because every Nam, Nam Rukuna Lila, every name, like you have an engine of a of a train, and there's so many bogies or cars, what we call train cars, bogies. They're all connected, ta, 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 all the way to the back, and it's pulling. So when you have the name, the name of Radha and Krishna Yuga, or Krishna by himself, it's like the engine, and behind that engine, there's so many. Each bogey is another lila. <laughs> right, it's shown. Each bogey is another. Each train car in India, they call it bogey, is another lila. So you say Shri Jai Shri. Okay, Jai Shri Lakshmi Devi, and you know, she's opulent and majestic, and Vaikuntha 
I went to Rani and and so please bless me with wealth or gold. But when uh, when a Manjri Babu Pasak when he says Jaya Shri, then he thinks, oh yeah, this in this pastime Radharani defeated Krishna. And in Pashakela, it's just something like uh, Chopra, this board game. There's dice and you move a piece, this combination of dice and something like chess called uh, Pashke, Pashkela or Chopra. She defeats him there. She defeats him in Jalkeli. She defeats him in Ratikeli. She de- <laughs> so therefore, Jai Shri, Jai Shri, Jai Shri. So the Mandris, they're always cheering for Jai Shri, Jai Shri. And you, you know, you study all these Shastras. So this this one name, we because uh, all names are like that. They have so much long meaning behind them. Nam, Rukun, Lila, they're inseparable. If you have Krishna's name, you have Krishna's Lila. When the devotee asked Prabhupada in a letter, he said, I'm chanting Hare Krishna, the mantra, Japa. And uh, Radha Krishna passed, or let's say he said, Krishna's pastimes are coming in my mind from the Krishna book. Is it okay? Is that all right? Can you think of Krishna's pastimes when you chant Japa? Because Prabhupada... You told us we're supposed to just pray 10,000 times a second and a minute. Oh, Radharani, oh, Mother Hara, please, oh, energy of the Lord, oh, Shakti, oh, Sarva Shakti Mai Radha, please engage me in the service of the boss, the big man, the Uprawala, Paramishvara Krishna. So that's, that's very good because the whole, I, I, the whole conception of that bhavana the Prabhupada gave is to cement and to affirm and cement and create and to manifest within our working consciousness and mind that I am Krishna Das. I am Krishna Dasi. Jivera Swarupaya Krishnera Nitya Das. So that's helpful and that's very good. But then this devotee is saying, so I'm not doing that. I'm chanting the Mahamantra and thinking of Leela. Is that bad? Prabhupada said, that's good. <laughs> that's very good. You must come to the point where you're chanting your japa and the Leelas are coming to you because of your attractive quality of your bhakti, bhakti sankarsha, like a chumbak. If there's any Indian people here, magnet. Magnet has the power of attraction, chumbak. It's also the interesting word, Chumbak means kiss also. So there's some attraction before that in the hearts. So the, this uh, name is like that. It, it, it brings so much with it. So he's praying, he's, I've, he's had this sporty, he's entered the Leela, he's been, he was fanning them in such a way, and I, I think we'll also read the Tika here, and that maybe brings out more points, some of my own points. Beautiful Leela here, Vasant Leela is here also, told by Srila Nantadas, Babaji Maharaj, or, or there's two or three commentaries mixed together, but primarily his. He published it. Nanda Gopal Goswami, Prabhupada Nanda Gopal Goswami, and Madhusudan Das, Adhikari. Adhikari, all three are combined in these tikas, and they're acknowledged in the first verse of the Rasudaniti. And we love Kusamanjali also. But uh, I asked Advaita Das, who translated it, and he's, he has the Bengali, the original Bengali, with all the tikas, so he knows. So I asked him, I said, what's the percentage of, of this wonderful purports and tikas that are the Acharya, the, the Mahant of Radhakun, uh, Babaji Maharaj? He said, more than half, in most cases, but especially the Leelas, the Leelas are coming from the uh, Prabhupada and Nanda Gopal. At any rate, it's all the mercy of Radharani and the great Acharyas and the realized souls. And as everyone knows, maybe that's why we're all sitting here today. We've all been uh, bitten. <laughs> We've all been bitten by the bug of Radharani's mercy coming in the form of these books in Russian, Hindi, Bengali, originally in Bengali and English. Uh, I've been reading these books since 1987, 88. This is a Xerox copy with a Vrindavan binding and all yellow pages. It was given to me personally by Dvaita Das. It's incomparable commentaries, no doubt. 
they're flowing and gushing from the fountain-like heart of the, the Acharya here of Radhakund. So we're indebted, we're grateful to all of our teachers and contributors to the development of our pure bhakti. So we should regularly mention and remember such great well-wishers along the path. Uh, you may have noted, if you've been listening attentively, in the last how many minutes? 20 minutes, I've mentioned the name Prabhupada. And I've also mentioned the name of Srila Natadas. So you can't separate, it's like you can't separate the fruit of the tree from the earth, or from the air, or from the sunshine, or from the gardener, or from God, or from the will of God. Everything's behind this fruit are so many factors and so many contributors, the tree, the trunk, the internal system of the tree, the roots, the earth, the minerals, the sun. So that's what makes the fruit of bhakti, is the input of many, of strong roots, and a good trunk and lots of support and encouragement from others. Every devotee is a loving well-wisher, a non-envious loving well-wisher of devotees. If there's any hunkar or ego, then how can you wish well for others? Because we're always looking for the advantage for ourselves. Well, how can you benefit me or how can I profit from you? <laughs> Profit-loss calculation. And <laughs> so it's like that. So this is line four. So it's describing, he saw this, he rendered that service, then he came out of that Antar Chit internal consciousness. He said, wow. Like we say, we wake up, like, it's pretty obvious type of dreams I'm having these days. But the other day I had a dream, I, I was on Sankirtan. <laughs> There's 16 hours a day across the street, they're chanting Hare Krishna. So needless to say, so I was... Uh, I was uh, leading in Kirtan, and there was about seven or eight devotees, and we were going around Radhakun. And I was blissful. <laughs> of course, that's a projection, or that's a want, or I like to do. But so that I thought that's a very nice dream. So when I came out, I thought, oh, this is nice, very nice. I'm not, I'm not going to write about it because such dreams devotees have all the time. But in his case, these sportis or deep visions are gifts of Yoga Maya. And he wants to show us, he's taking us by the hand into the kingdom of Leela and saying, do as I have done. I'm showing you the way. You can serve, as I mentioned repeatedly, you can serve in cooperation and in, in, in uh, allegiance and in sangha of your guru sakhi, para, param guru sakhi, or just, just you and Tulsi Mandri, or you and Rupa Mandri, or you and Lalita. Many combinations are there because it's based on your individual rag. The entire dynamics of the spiritual world unfolds according to your rag. How do you see it? How do you understand it? And then your seeing and your understanding of that, that reality of the spiritual world and the seva and siddha sarup that you render as a sadhaka and will attain in perfection will all be uh, corrected and uh, adjusted by the input from Shikshin Diksha Guru. It's not left to your unlimited imagination, although that's also required and necessary. Good powers of imagination and visualization are also very helpful on the path of Rag Bhakti. If you're dry and dull, then you won't go far. You won't have Rag to begin with. <laughs> As, uh, anyway, another point. So, this is, uh, he's, all these books or guides he's doing, we can do. A very simple setting. It's a very simple thing. <coughs> there's a, <coughs> excuse me. There's a Kalindi Yamuna. There's the Bank of Kalindi. There's a beautiful Navalata Mandir, Radha and Krishna there. And every every scene, it, it, everywhere, it's going to be Radha and Krishna and you. So the who's fanning here? Kada Kuryam Samavijanam Ahaha Radha Muravido. You're fanning, and he's saying Kada Kuryam. He, who's he? He's Tungavidya Saki, or his Mandri form. Name is not told, but many verses he's absorbed in that form. And Chandogya Upanishad says, and it's quoted in Bhakti, Bhakti Sandarbha, that the Jivatma, and these are not even Jivatmas, these are not Jiva Tattvas, these are Sarup Shakti personalities that are writing this. So they can have so many Ananta Rupam. But the Jivas, we are Jiva Shakti. Uh, the Tatastha Jivas, uh, per the 
per the desire or need of the devotee to serve the Lord, or the Lord's desire to accept service from his expanded parts, Jiva Shakti, Chandogi Upanishad is numbers there also, which escapes me now, it says the Jiva can expand into 1,020 forms. So don't worry about your Gaur Sarup and your, <laughs> and your Mandri Sarup. And if you want to just, that, whatever your Guru indicates to you, you follow that line. You can have one Sarup or two or 1,020 if you want. You, you can be a ca five different coward boys and ten different Mandris. And <laughs> it's like, how far, how expansive is your rag? It's like in the old days, a man had ten wives. Now you say, listen, I'll give you free ten wives. You say, no, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. No, they're really beautiful. They're, they're gentle. They're talented. They're intelligent. They, they're, they're a wonderful person. No, I, I appreciate it. No, just <laughs> one is, and, and vice versa, <laughs> wife with us. So how much rag you have and how extensive it is and how many sarups it takes in, uh, that, and of course uh, your guru may give some shape to that direction of your meditation. <clears throat> but you also may recognize your individual rag, because you may come in a particular line in Gaudiya Sampradaya where the standard procedure is to give one, or they don't even give actually, I haven't seen anywhere, where they give the name, they don't give the Gaur name, nor do they give the, the details of the Varna and Vatsan, the color, the complexion, and the, and the because it's all one, it's all generic. So some gurus say that the, the, the Sarup in Gaur Lila, some of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, I mean, of course, outside of his Gaudiya they say that this present Sadaka Rup, as, as a lady or gentleman, that is your Gaur Sarup, and what bhajan you're doing in this, in the meditation, yoga pit meditation, you're doing as, as Krishna Dhatsi, and, so that, and then there's a generic meditation. Everyone in Gaur Lila, if they have Sarup in Gaur Lila, they're a Kaishur Brahman, like a Mandri. Instead of being 12 years old as a mandri, then and Vrindavan Leela, then you're 12 years old as a cute little, you know, effulgent little uh, sparkly, sparkly eyed Brahmin, a Bengali Brahmin with gold. And so then they write in Gorgavinda Smarna Padati uh, by Jan, Dhyan Chandra, <clears throat> he says, he says that, uh, you know, meditate on yourself. So is it generic meditation? It's like clones. Every single woman, who goes on, comes in these lines or every man, they're all thinking, I, I'm this 12-year-old boy and I have a golden complexion, a beautiful white Brahmin thread draped across my chest and I have a white, a beautiful white shutter and the, on the edge of the shutter there's a little line of golden flowers, you know, in gold, embroidered in gold. <laughs> and I'm very peaceful in my bhajan and I look very effulgent and I'm very attentive to my service. And my, guru's on my, my guru's on my right-hand side. So that, that's what's told, and that, but not always it has to be like that. Because you may say, frankly, Gurudev, I'm not that interested in Gorlila. I worship as as a sadhya. Don't misunderstand. Sadhya. Sadhya means goal. Especially North Indians. North Indians and the people that aren't Bengalis. They, they don't have much rag, sabhavik rag, natural rag for Gaur Nitai. Or, you know, for us, it's like, because we, that's, <laughs> it wasn't for Gaur Nitai, we wouldn't have any rag or anything for anything. <laughs> so we're all very much uh, Jagai Madai Sampradayak, Sampradayak affiliates. So we're all uh, products of the mercy, causes mercy, especially of Nitai, because he's more merciful, and Goranga. So out of gratitude and indebtedness, we may feel, yes, I want to be part of this. And you can be part of that, and then there's different ideas of that also. You can get your Gaur Sarup, but you'll be in the, in the Nitya Leela of Gaur, in the Prakat Vrindavan Leela, I mean, excuse me, Navadvip Leela, going from universe to universe. So that's why it doesn't really matter, birth after birth, Janmani Jaman Bhagavad Bhaktir Ahoytiki Tvayi. If you're with Krishna, or you're with Garanga, you're in the material world, or you're in the spiritual world, it, wherever they are, it's a spiritual reality. Because it's a consciousness, it's not a place. It's not a piece of terra firma, or a piece of land. Oh, this is the land of Bengal, Gorlila, Navajip, Mandal. No, it's consciousness. 
It's a plane of consciousness. So you can be anywhere and enter Gordon. You can be in be in Berlin and go in meditation, then you enter that plane of consciousness. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, there's several places that are indicated where when Maitreya Muni and Vidura, I forget the whole sequence, but there was Uddhav, Maitreya, it's in third canto of Bhagavatam, Maitreya, Uddhav and Vidura. They were, someone came, one of the, whoever came, I think it was Vidura came to meet Maitreya and Uddhava came or something, he was there and it's, and it's described that Uddhava in the Sanskrit said, Uddhava came down, Uddhava came down from Dwarka. And he was sitting in Hardwar, sitting in somewhere in North in the UP somewhere where he met Maitreya and Vidura. He came down from the plane. He was, he was, already, he was sitting there with Maitreya but he was, he was like in the corner meditating. Like sometimes there's some party and somebody's really out of it and he just sits in the corner. And everybody else does their thing. So he was meditating on the Leela and he was in, in Dwarka uh, rendering service in his and the plane. So he, so he came down from that plane. He, there's many several verses like this. That just for another example, uh, Vidyadara Vidyadara liberated in the Krishna book. It was Shiv Chaturdasi and Nanda Baba and all the senior men, maybe ladies that are wives also, I can't say. They went to one forest in western Brajmandal, in the Kamvan side, and it's called Ambikavan. And Ambika, Ambika is, a, is a form of Durga. So it was uh, right around Shiv Chaturdasi. Uh, what do they call it? No, Shiv Chaturdasi. So they went there to worship Ambika. And Krishna was in Nandagram with his nanny or grandmother or whoever. He was staying there, and they were 50 kilometers away. And Nanda Baba, when he was sleeping, one big python or something, snake, was swallowing him. Who was a demigod, a curse to be. He was a vidyadara. Vidyadara means like a charna, kinara, vidyadara. These are all these subtle celestial uh, sattvic beings. They're subtle tamasic beings, bhutas, pratas, pishachas, pishachas, bhuts, prates, and vetalas. And there's a whole group of them mentioned. And they're they, tamasic, and they caused a lot of problem for passionate human beings on this plane. But these subtle beings, they're on the higher higher realm, the Kinaras, Chanaras, and Gandharvas, and a whole long list of them, Kimparushas. And they're well-wishers of the, of the devotees, and they help the devotees. They're sattvic, subtle beings, invisible. So he was one of those, Vidyadaras, and then he became, you know, cursed somehow because he was proud of his beauty. They're very beautiful, uh, celestial men and women, like we say, celestial damsels. So he became a snake, and he's swallowing Nanda Baba. So Nanda Baba said, Krishna, Krishna, Mahabaho, Krishna, Krishna, Mahabaho, oh, ba Mahabaho, oh, big arms, strong arms, oh, Krishna, Bachao, Bachao, save me, save me. And Krishna, boing, like Star Trek movie or something, you know. <laughs> Just some smoke comes and, yes, you have called. What do you want? <laughs> he materialized out of nowhere. So the, the original Star Trek hero, D Derek, uh, whatever, Derek, whatever, I can't remember. <laughs> Krishna, he just appeared, boom, from that, because he was in the underground and he just appeared there in that place. Because he just stepped out from behind the curtains, like you have a drama. Okay, get ready. Okay, now go on the stage. You know, they come out, da. So he's, he's right there behind the screen. It's just like he's right here. And it's, it's for us, we're not in Prema. So it's Aprakat Vrindavan. We can't see it. But it's all happening. Every day we put our head in the dust of, of Manasapavangat. And we pray, Radharani, oh, you, just, you walked here this afternoon. Now it's evening time. And I'm paying my pranams. You know, it's, some kunkum will come on my forehead. Some of your chandan, some of your kunkum. Or maybe some 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 dust from your feet. Why can't I see? You're you're moving here, because if even if it's a night, if I have the eyes, the night will become day. It will become midday, and I'll see Radharani and the gopis right there at six o'clock in the evening, seven. This is the power of praying drishti. Praying drishti opens up the eternal reality, and it's not bound by place or time. If this prem is here. Then you go anywhere and the prem will open up the whole thing. 
And just like a curtain, like everyone's all set up and everyone's dressed up as gopis and Krishna, and there's some introduction, and no one knows what's going to, what, what they're going to see behind the curtains. All of a sudden they go, Phew! wow, oh, that's my friend. Oh, look, that, it, that looks like so and so. I don't know. Who is it? Looks, and everyone's trying to figure out who's who. And it's all very real. So that's just like this. There's our chitta, there's our chit, and then there's the, the supra chit, the spiritual consciousness. It's just a veneer, or just a thin veil between the two. <laughs> but <that's, laughs> that veil takes lifetimes to <laughs> remove by bhakti bhajana vyas, daily practices of sadhana bhakti. Then finally, prem comes. It's, it, says, it's like, it says it's an anjana, prem anjana, lochan. You know, they have these eye drops, you know, you put on dusty, burning, hot summer days of India, you put some rose water or something. Wow. Or in Jagannath Puri, <clears throat> the Jagannath Swami, they all, they all, in the summertime they put kaffir on, on his eyelids, you know, whatever, what they call eyelids. They put kapoor, you know, kaffir, they put up there, and then when you go there and take darshan, they'll, they, sometimes they take it and they give it, if you give a big donation. <laughs> my, my, my Indian friends, I can't, I don't go, I can't go. But they, they go like this and see, and then they say, close your eyes, and they put like this and like that. And then, oh, it's very nice. It's actually very nice. There's two types of Kapoor. There's one edible one for kheer and sweet, and one Arctic chemical wala, or use the same one for all of your devotional <laughs> edible one. Very cooling. So this is uh, this fourth line here that's describing the sporty. And his prayer and siddha is sadaka vesh. When will I attain such cherished service? So we're to read these books and we see this. Oh, this, what a beautiful leela. That Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Bank of the Yamuna. Yeah, I've seen the Yamuna. I, I know the Yamuna bank. I've seen some trees there and Gunja. And, and there's a terrace and Radha Krishna. And I'm outside and. And then I and I pulling on the ceiling fan, and I see that they're coming, <laughs> coming out. And then now, what service? Now I pick up some chamaran. So the, this is we read, and then we're supposed to reflect on this. And how? What kind of? Then the third line, which we already discussed, describes how. What kind of fanning he's doing, which we describe. So now he's saying, now you, you meditate on that, you see that in your mind's eye as much as Guru Kripa allows you to see. And then, and you're, oh, this is so nice. When can I do this? When, when? Because the whole, the whole point I want to discuss today is about Lalasa and Bhajan. So far it's been a slight introduction of 38 minutes takes a long time to taxi on the runway sometimes. Take off, you know, you go this way, that way, and you're wondering when you'll fly. <laughs> so, let's fly. <laughs> so this, this idea is lalasa, which is, means hankering. Uh, city lalasa. If, and sometimes I've heard people say, there are different bhajans by Narutam Das Thakur Mahashai, and uh, Bhakti Nyo Thakur and Gita Mala. He has seven or eight bhajans called Siddhi Lalasa. Uh, poems, Bengali poems, we call bhajans. I've heard some people say or even teach that, no, no, they, these songs, these bhajans, are only for the, when you're a siddha. When you're, when you're actually perfect, then you can chant these and, and hanker for these services. <laughs> That's not the point. Because the whole word Lalasa means I'm hankering to attain Siddhi. I want to, I want, now I'm a sadhak, I want, I'm, I'm in sadhaka vesh, I want to attain siddha vesh, I want to attain siddha sarup. I want to, I'm even, maybe I've given it, or I want to realize it by nam or bhajan or whatever. But I have, I have, to, ultimately I have to realize it, see it, feel it, be it, serve in it, forever. That's siddhi, that's perfection, samadhi, mukti, liberation, praying samadhi. So that it's quite wrong. <laughs> quite wrong and so uh, this concept of lalasa it's it's goes together with rag if there is if there's attachment and attraction and taste for serving Radha and krishna then you're anxious 
you're anxious, you're yearning, you're hankering. When, when, everywhere this verse, is, this word is there, kada, 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 kave, kave, kave. When, 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 when. And so it goes way back to the beginning. Remember the beginning? Oh, when will I get out of this hell? When will I get out of this hell called material life? When will I get away from these hellish people called my friends? <laughs> and then somehow you, then Krishna answers your prayers. Says, when? Right now, here, meet a devotee. Oh, you're dancing to the tune of a different drum. You're speaking something different. You're, you're not selfish. You're not going to exploit me. You're not, you're not going to rip me off, as they say. No, I want to give. I came to you to give. To give you something wonderful that someone gave me. Krishna. Take it. <laughs> Take him. <laughs> so then their life changes. So then they get a whole new sangha of happening people, good people, devotees, and all the other ones disappear. So when, 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 then, okay, now you're so much situated in transcendence surrounded by well-wishing spiritual personalities and the hopes for the future are bright and you feel hopeful, new, renewed hope about your life and some renewed enthusiasm to carry on in the struggle for material existence. Then you're thinking, oh, but I need a guide. I need a guru. I need a teacher. So then you start saying, when? <laughs> when will I get guru? When? 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 Where? How? So then when? So now you're... Here, who's in a higher level of bhajan than Ragnar Das Goswami or Prabhupada Saraswati? And they're saying when? I said when 40 years ago. When will I get out of hell? Now I'm saying when will I get to heaven? <laughs> well, at that time, I just wanted to get out of hell. I mean, to, to put it in a short way. <laughs> you can to expand what you, what you individually consider to be your own individual hells that you lived through, lived through, passed through, or are in. So the, this when is a big thing. So for Smarn, I'm repeating again these who, what, when, where, and why. Oh no, we're down here. So this Lala Sabhajan, this is a very important part of sadhana. We're hankering, we're always increasing, we should always increase our hankering and yearning. If, it, if it's not happening, if you're hankering to be with Radha and Krishna, to see Radha and Krishna, because sometimes we hear, oh, you shouldn't want to see Radha and Krishna, you should not, you should not want to see Krishna. Um, I've heard so many things as I've passed my life, half my life. I've heard many, many things, and many things are wrong, and many things are not correct. And many things, I don't even know who said, but oftentimes people tell me something very important, say, so-and-so said this, and so-and-so never said that. Never ever said that. Even a big Acharya guru, ancient guru, whatever. And, then, and what to speak, they never told me. <laughs> if, I, if my rag is such that, that I'm going crazy, I can't sleep at night, I can't eat, and, and I give up all eating unless, until I can see Krishna, like Madhavendra Puri in the banks of Govinda Kund. He said, I want to see you, Govinda. This is Govinda Kund. This is Giriraj. You're, the, you're Govardhan. You're always increasing the mercy and kindness for the devotees. I'm, taking, I'm looking you on my left eye, I'm right eye, I'm looking at Govinda Kund, and I'm facing north towards Radha Kund, Barsana, Nandagam. My name is Madhavendra Puri. I'm sitting on my baitak on the south side of Govinda Kund. Right? So if you're sitting south, you're looking north. Why north? Because Radha Kun, Shama Kun, Barsana, Nandagram, Yavit, them, the goal, the Sadhya, the uh, Prayojan. Oh, Giraj, please help me. You're so merciful, you're so kind. You're Baba, you're Giraj Baba, you're my grandfather. And, and Prabhupada said, Grandfather is more kind than the father. <laughs> no, it's not a Vinjapuri. So then he's looking, oh, Govinda Kun, oh, Govinda. You know, you, you, you delight all the senses, Vinda, and, and, you, and Go means senses, Indriya, the Gyanendriya, Karmendriya, and you're Vinda, Vindate, one who gives pleasure and satisfaction. I'm unhappy. I'm not satisfied. My senses are dry. My ears are, I'm deaf, I'm blind, I, I can't smell. 
Why? Because I, I'm devoid of your darshan. I cannot see you. I cannot smell your divine fragrance. Hear your ankle bells, your flute, or your sweet voice, or your waist bells, kinkini, nupura. What, is, what good are these ears? It's like the ear holes of a snake. These eyes are like the eyes of a vulture looking for a dead body. This nose is like the nose of a pig looking for smelling stool in a field. I'm not going to eat. I'm not going to drink. I'm going to sit here and do bhajan until I see Govinda. This is Madhavendra Puri. You know, you all know the story. Lord Chaitanya was so captivated by this story, so much captivated by the whole personality of Madhavendra Puri. He's a, he's a big feature in the Chaitanya Charitamrita because he, he, he had an extremely huge impact on the life of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And such a big impact that Mahaprabhu wanted to share it with all his followers. So that's why when he went to Raymuna on his Yatra de Puri, he stopped in Raymuna at uh, Kirchor Gopinath, Mandir. And then he, sa he said, listen, do you, know the, do you know the glories of Kirchor Gopinath? And their great devotee, Madhavendra Puri. And some, they said, we've heard something, but we'd like to hear from you. Then he narrated so beautifully, chapter 15 of Madhya Lila, I think so. I think it's called Pure Devotional Service or something. You know, Chaitanya Charitamrita. All about Madhavendra Puri. How so? Because he met him in South India. He came here, Mahaprabhu came here to Govinda Kund. At the end of Kartik, he arrived. On Kartik Purnima, 15 days from now is the day that Lord Chaitanya came on Purnima. And he stayed, he stayed those 15 days, and he stayed 30 days of Posh, uh, no, Mrigashirsh, uh, next month. He stayed that one month, and then that 15 days, something like one and a half, almost two months. And then in, after Mrigashirsha and Posh month, he went to Alalabad for Kumbha Mela. His Kumbha Mela is in, uh, End of Posh and Magmas. It's called Magmela. Mela. So Lord Chaitanya went there, and when he went to Govinda Kund, and he saw the Vaitak of Madhavendra Puri, he fell apart, he fell to pieces. So this is an example. Madhavendra Puri had intense city lalasa, intense lalasa and hankering. I must see you. Do or die. I must see my Rai. Rai means Radha. That's intensity. Intensity of purpose, sankalp, affirmation, resolution. Like a flame of a candle in a windless place, it doesn't move. There's no wind, you put a candle in the room, middle. Steady, bright, unwavering, not moving. Just endlessly burning towards eternity. This is the sankalpa, determination. It's very, very good to want to see Krishna. If you, you're trying to love someone, oh, I really want to love this lady. Do you want to see her? No, I don't want to see her. Why should I want to see her? I'm just, I'm just, you know, just working and acting in such a way that she'll knock on my door one day and say, here I am. <laughs> well, then then don't, have de don't have temples or deities. It's like, just like, in uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami Pati writes a verse. And this verse is not about generic Govinda, by the way. Some people misunderstand this verse. In Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, famous verse. When I tell you, you'll know very well. But this verse was specifically written as an offering to the Takraji of Rupa Goswami, his Ishtadev. Rupa Goswami Pad, he wrote Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And he wrote a prayer to his Takraji. Like you may write prayers to your Giraj or Giraj in your own way, little poems or whatever. That's people do. So he wrote this prayer and he said, he's looking at Govindaji in Jayapur, Adi, Adi Govinda. He said, Oh, Govindaji, such a beautiful face, such mischievous eyes, dancing this way, that way. And your smile, you look so modest, and you look so innocent, but I know you're so naughty, and you're so, and you're so enchanting, and you're, you just, you've danced in my, into my heart, and, and you've danced into my mind, and I just can't 
stop dancing and walking behind you. I'm afraid that you have bewitched me. You have totally captivated my existence. I can never leave you. I can't take, I, my eyes are glued on you. I can't take my eyes off. So then he writes this prayer. Listen everyone, I want to warn you, danger. This is, there's sharks in this water. If you go surfing here, you'll get eaten. <laughs> Surf at your own risk. I remember going surfing some places. They have a sign there on the beach. It said, there's shark, shark infested waters. Swim at your own risk. So a couple of guys or teenagers look at each other. You, you want to go for it? <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> Waves are good. <laughs> so this is a gamble. <laughs> So you go in, and then, but everyone's like looking for waves and looking for this little thing. <laughs> There's a little thing that goes above the water like this. And when you see one, you kneel on your surfboard. You don't put your <laughs> legs on the outside. You kneel and go, <laughs> catch that wave, whoop! <laughs> you go so fast into the shore, otherwise you might get your backside chopped off, you know. So uh, this, it's perilous, it's dangerous, it's life-threatening. So that's what happens if you see the face of Govinda. I listen. Hey, hello. If you want to maintain your attachment to society, now it's becoming familiar. If you want to maintain your attachment to society, friendship, and love, then don't, then don't, then don't go to the banks of Keshigat because just near there, there's Govinda Ji Mandir and there's my Thakur. And if you see that Govinda, then your, your material life is subnashed, hogia, finished, destroyed. You'll just say, goodbye husband, goodbye wife, goodbye job, goodbye school, goodbye everything, hello Govinda. <laughs> that is what will happen. So this is, I think everyone knows this idea, uh, that verse, I, I'm a little slow, so I don't know the Sanskrit, but it's all about his deity of Govinda. So he's, he's, what he's doing there is saying, he's actually, it's, it's parokshavad, it's indirect. He's saying, don't do this, which means do this. <laughs> and then, so you should be anxious. Oh, if you see Govinda, all these things will happen. I mean, I'll lose my wife and my family and everything. Sounds great. Let me run to Vrindavan and see Govinda. Hey, Govinda, or Jayapur, now he's in Jayapur. Go to Jayapur. Hey, Jayapur, I, I read and, and that if I see you, that I'll forget everything, so please bless me. I really want to forget my wife and my husband and my everything. <laughs> please bless me. And you better watch out. I'm telling you. I'm warning you. Don't do it. Just don't do it. Because you're playing with fire. You know, you play with fire, you get burned. So if you play with Govinda, Rupa Goswami's words are Shastra, they're Satyam, they're powerful, they're true. They're effective, immediately effective, like cyanide. I remember once, who was it? Maybe it was Radha Swami or someone. Someone, I think it was Radha Swami, he came, because he, he was on a yatra about, I don't know, 10 or 15 years ago, uh, some time ago. I think, I believe it was uh, Pujapad Srila Radha Swami. He went to Radha Raman Mandir to see Radha Manji and Takraji Radha Raman. And he's praying to them, he said, Oh, Radha Raman. Please, but please give me your mercy. I want to, I want to attain perfection, uh, praying or whatever. I don't know whatever his prayer was, but he was praying. The idea, the essence was, please give me your mercy. Please give me your mercy. Please give me your mercy. So then he left that mandir, and he was walking back towards Loi Bazaar with some devotees. And it was nighttime, and, no, and nowadays there's so many lights everywhere, but there are no lights. Like old days, Vrindavan, and the lights go out, and it's like, where am I? <laughs> And then he, he, he stepped in a, what we call open sewer, a nali, a drain. On the, there's the wall of Seva Kunj, and there's a road, and there's a drain. He stepped in there and, and broke his leg. And he was in a cast. This was 19, I don't know, I think that was when they were out of Iskand for about eight years. Anyway, whenever. It was way back then. And he broke his leg and he was in a cast. And he used to tell this story. He said, he said be careful when you pray to Radharaman. He's very powerful. I prayed for mercy. So then why his leg was broken, he did so much reading and chanting and whatnot, you know, studying harmonium or whatever, you know, he, he had a music teacher in Bali. 
So this is a clear example of a very famous personality everyone knows very well. <laughs> so he, he wanted to see Radharaman and he wanted to pray, pray to them for some perfection and some blessings and he got it. So we should um, very much, this is, this is Lalasa, hankering and yearning to live in Vrindavan, to see Radha and Krishna, to see Radha and Krishna's leelas, to attain a particular service or render a service while hearing and chanting during our daily sadhana. We should pray for a vision. Because you don't, if you never pray for anything, it's, Krishna wants to give everything. He wants to give, but if we're like, oh, because sometimes people say, oh, I've heard, I don't know where it's written, it's not written in our uh, Upanishads or anywhere else. They say, well, when I'm ready, the Guru will come to me. When I'm ready, you must have heard this very hippie type phrase, you know, I heard it 40 years ago. No, just do your thing or whatever you're, whatever you're doing. When you're ready, automatically the Guru will come. But that's not what it says. It says that, it says, you should have, it says, Samet Pani Prashoti and Brahma, it says it, um, uh, says Jignasu Shayutamam says that you should I forget the Sanskrit word but in the verse it's there about describing the definition and characteristics of the Guru Shabde Pre Nishtam Brahmanishtam Shabde Pre Brahmanishtam he's Brahman Brahmanishtam means he's fixed in Krishna consciousness and Shabde Pare he's heard and studied the Shastras at the feet of his Guru or independently or usually in it both, you need both, you need guru and teacher to understand the Shastra. And then you go to him, Sumit Pani, you, it says, um, I forget the word, but it says you have to go to the guru. You have to go to the guru with an offering in your hand. Sumit means a type of firewood, arani, arani wood that's used for yagya. Pani means hands. Pani, just like in uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Sarvato Pani Padam Tat, Sarvato Kshisharomakam, Sarvato Shrutimala, okay? Uh, Avrita, Lokaram Avrita Tishtati or something. Krishna, in the translation, Krishna is saying, everywhere are my, Sarvato Panipadam Tat, everywhere are my hands and feet. This is about Virata Rup, or Krishna's Paramatma. He's everywhere. He's a, the Shakshi, he's a witness. So he says, Sarvato Panipadam, Sarvato Panipadam Tat, everywhere are my hands, Pani, Sarvata Pani, Sarvapadam, my feet. Sarvato Shikshiromakam, everywhere are my eyes, my Akshi, and my mukam, my mouth. So I'm, I'm seeing everything and I'm, I'm hearing everything. And I'm shooting out, and I'm, I'm hearing everything. In this way, I'm situated in this world. This is Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna is uh, like that. <laughs> and so we, we should, in this, we should feel that in this life, as this uh, pratana, which I want to read from in the last five minutes, he's, he's giving shape to this kind of thinking and consciousness with his so many lalasa prayers. He's saying, I, I will, I will serve Radha and Krishna during this life and after death and after death and I will see their pastime places day and night. Radhe Krishna Sevan Muni Jivane Marane Lila Stana Deki Ratri Dine Then he says, he talks the next song we, I, I just thought I'd read it. It's very beautiful. Because it's, it's giving more elaboration for our meditation and pointing us in the direction of Siddhi Lalasa. And this uh, is here. It says, Radha Krishna Sevan Muni Jivane Marani. In life or death I will serve Radha and Krishna. Tanar Stana Tanar Lila Dekon Ratri Dine. Day and night I will go to their pastime places. I'm not seeing their pastimes. I may read about them when I go there from some book. I'll go into Lilamrita or whatever. And, but then when I go there, I'll, it's, it, I'll pray that I will see them. He says, Jai Stane Jai Lila Kari Jugula Kishore Sakir Sangini Haha Tahani Hanabur. He's saying, when will, I, when will I see these pastimes? I will go to these Lila Stans. And, uh, and Yugo Kishore will be there, and I'll go Saki Sangini in the association of the Sakis. So I'll read the translation. So all of what he's telling here is a, uh, it's titled here, Shri Rupa Rati. It's a prayer to Rupa Mandri and Rati Mandri, or Tulsi Mandri, Rupa and Raghunath. It's his, 
it's called sankalp. In Hindi, they drop off the egg. We say sankalpa, <clears throat> but it's sankalp. So he says, I will serve Radha and Krishna during this life and after death, and I will see their pastime places. Dekon Sevon. He says, Dekon Sevon. I'll see and I'll serve. I, I will see. Uh, as a dear companion of the Saki, Saki Sangini, I will see the various pastimes performed by Yugula Kishore. Lila. Lila Kare, Yugula Kishore. And in Vrindavan. And I will become absorbed in them. He's saying, this is, this is his hankering. I will constantly serve the lotus feet of Rupa Mandri, which are my mantra and my greatest medicine. O Rati Mandri, O Devi, please be merciful to me and always, be the, always give me the shelter of your lotus feet. O Sri Rasa Mandri Devi, please glance upon me so that my mind will meditate on your lotus feet. I, Naratam Das, eternally pray to li Lila Yugo, Lila Yugo, Radha Madhav, and their pleasure pastimes in Vrindavan. So he's praying to the Radha and Krishna, he's praying to the Lila Stali, he's praying to his Guru, he's praying to the pastimes themselves. Like we read Jal Keli, Madhyan Lila, Radha Kund, two o'clock in the afternoon. We read from Govinda Lila Amrita, or Krishna Bhavan Amrita. So then, oh, so that we can actually pray to the pastime itself. Oh, this pastime is beautiful. Oh, Lila, oh, Jalkeva Lila, please manifest in my heart. I want to see you. I want, I, I, this is the, there's a certain, what Lalasa means. What is the meaning of Lalasa? It means an internal driving force, an internal driving uh, hankering. I want this. Because we have two choices in this life. We can want Maya, or we can want Krishna. And wanting Krishna means everything we're talking about and more. And wanting Maya means we have our whole whole software full of Maya to give us so many things to want. <laughs> I want this and I want that. And everyone know, has their whole list, long list of wants which are irrelevant and unnecessary in terms of pure bhakti. And what to speak of this, this is another prayer of Lalasa which is very popular. Radha Krishna Prana Mor Jugala Kishore Everyone sings that. And when you sing it, doesn't your heart stretch? When you sing it, Radha Krishna Pra, and everyone, so many different people sing it so beautifully. And it, it pulls the strings of your heart. It pulls, it creates hankering. And you, and you sing it once every six years. <laughs> but this, what mood, when you sing this song, Radha Krishna Prana Mora Jugala Kishore, in Russia, in America, everywhere, everyone's singing standard this is so this one song is is the whole foundation of rag bhakti it ha includes rag it includes hankering includes lala samayi which is a theme of what we're talking about lala sabajan jivane marani gati ara nahi in life or death not nahi nothing else for me but you you're my pran kalindira kule kele kadameravan ratana vedira Vedi, Ratna Vedi, Upara Bhosava Duvajan. And I'm my meditation, I'm going, I'm seeing you and I'm hankering. When will I take you and sit you on a beautiful jeweled uh, platform, Vedi, Asan, on the banks of Yamuna? Again, as we're hearing here, Alinde Kalindi Tata. It's Kalindira Kule. Kule means the banks also. Keli Kadambavan. There's all oh, so many Kadamba trees everywhere. So fragrant, and so beautiful. And then Sham Gori Anga Devo Chandaniraganda. Oh Sham, oh Gori, such beautiful names for Radha and Krishna. That darkish, beautiful, handsome one. That golden, golden, sparkling, attractive one. And then I'll anoint their bodies with, with a very fragrant sandalwood paste mixed with, a, with an herb called Chuya. And then I'll fan them with a the Chamara. And as I'm fanning them, I'll see their beautiful moon-like faces and relish such ecstasy. And it goes on. I will, I will anoint their limbs of shaman gori with sandalwood paste, scented with perfume, and fan them with a chamara whisk. Oh, when will I behold their moonlike faces? After stringing a malati mala, I will drape it around their necks, and then I will offer 
Kaffir scented, Kaffir scented tumble to their lips. It says here, I will offer tumble scented with Kaffir to their lotus mouths. But the actual trans, the actual Sanskrit says, I will offer Kaffir scented tumble to their lips. It's, everything is important. Lips is the mouth. Oh yeah, here is this. I will actually, I'll put it in their lips. So this is, everything is very, the whole idea of Madhura Ras is very intimate. Because the Mandaris, this is all, because all these things were describing, putting something directly into someone's mouth. There's one verse from Radha Ras Sudhaniti that says that, Oh Radha Rani, when you're, when will, when you're pleased with my seva, will you put your tambal into my mouth? And I asked and wait to us about that. I said, does that mean you put your hand out and she spits it in, in your hand and you put it in your mouth? Or does that mean that she kisses you and puts it in your mouth? And he said, and the waiter told me, he said, you have to see that and find out in your meditation. <laughs> so obviously, that, of course, that could have different, you know, modern misinterpretations and misunderstandings in the perverted world we live in. Uh, two ladies and kissing and whatnot, and uh, everyone knows that. So that's all offensive and uh, low-class type of thinking. So that those things are in the Sanskrit. Because I asked him, I said, "What is the actual Sanskrit?" He said, "It's not saying. <laughs> He's leaving it. Uh, the authors because there's different ways to say. He says, put into the mouth. And, but put put it, it says put into the mouth. That's how he tra- how he translates. He's a translator, and I asked him directly." And I was very much captivated by that whole scene. I thought, wow, this is really, you know, really amazing. So this is, uh, so the minuteness of it, it says here, it says, Gantia malatir mala diva donharak, it says, adare, adare tulia diva karpura tambule. So this is, tambo is put adar, adar means the lips. Jagannath's name in Puri is called Raktadhara. Raktadhara. Raktadhara means red lips. <laughs> it's pretty clear to see that Jagannath has big, red, smiling lips. So right into the lips. He sh- and then it says, I'm with my, all these Sakis. And the order of the Sakis, beginning with Lalita and Ishaka, because they're the Mukya Sakis, I will serve their lotus feet. I pray and hanker for the Sevas of Radha Govinda Yugo but only in Anogatya to the Saki Brenda and the Saki, Saki uh, Guru Varg, Anogatya. Always in allegiance to Dasi, Anodasi, Anodasi. That's what I would, my footnote on the end here. I will serve uh, on the order, it says Agya. We have Guru Agya, the order of the Guru. So it says Lalita, Vishaka, Adi, Jata Saki Brenda. All the Sakis, Saki Brenda, the whole group of Sakis, Adi, Adi began with Lalita Mishaka because they're chief. Then Agya Kariba. Agya Kariba Seva Chana Aravinda. Agya, I'll receive their order. My Guru Saki will give me an order, or Rupa Rati, or Naratam is his Saki, his Guru Saki is Manjulali. Manjulali is Lokanath Goswami, and Naratam is, I believe, Champak Mandri. So on Guru Agya. So I explain this is the whole thing is allegiance, anogatya. So this is uh, the whole bhajan. This bhajan, which we're all familiar with, is is creating in us the concept of abhiman and abhilash. Abhi, abhiman and abhilash. Abhiman means the mentality, the identity. Where do I fix my identity? Where do I, I, I identify myself? I have this body. I have this situation, but what is my nitya, my eternal abhiman, my eternal mentality and identity? And abhilash, what is the direction? We have our self-identity, abhiman, and direction, our, cher- our cherished aspiration of sadhana. And this is it, serving Radha and Krishna Yuga in a very confidential, intimate way. So this is a bhajan which nourishes the whole idea of lalasa, or hankering, or eagerness, and bhajan. So why, when we read such prayers, I'll just finish on this, when we read such prayers of uh, Siddhi Lalasa, hankering for perfection, what, what's the effect? What happens to us? Our heart softens. This, everyone, when anyone sing, when any devotee sings his bhajan, what happens? He feels what? Or she feels what? Very, very good. Yes? 
and it's a nice tune. Radha Krishna, you know, we go, yeah, Radha Krishna, life or death, you know. But sing, it should be sung every day. And, and because by singing it, that's what I'm explaining, when you sing it or read it or read the translation or whatever, then you'll see that uh, these bhajans, they will soften the heart and they'll change the shape of our mentality, which I mentioned, Abhiman. And our minds will become centered, purified, and free from all external mundane hankering and desiring. Because we kept, it's kind of like <laughs> they accused us in the beginning, or even now maybe, oh, you Hare Krishnas are brainwashed. Yes, we want to brainwash ourselves. We want to wash all the non Radha and Krishna out of our brains and fill our brains with hankering and lalasa for seva, intimate sevas of Radha and Krishna. So by filling our minds with these prayers for seva, full of lalasa and hankering, deep heartfelt yearning, like Prabhupada Nanda Saraswati in this prayer, and, Ra and Raghunath Das Goswami, Vilap Kusamanjali and Prartana, this is the summon substance of lalasa bhajan and mandri bhav. So we're a little bit over time. Tomorrow we'll read Leela. We'll start by reading the Leela of uh, which is in the Tika. It's nice to hear Basant Lila in relation to this verse of fanning the divine couple. And we'll begin uh, verse 175. Prabhupada Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai 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 Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Jai Jai Shri Radhe Shant